In this video, we're going to look at the anatomy of the heart and how the blood flows through, and we call that the cardiac cycle. So let's have a look. The heart is located in our thoracic cavity, above the diaphragm, and in between the two lungs. This center area of the thoracic region is called the mediastinum, and the heart and the lungs are surrounded by connective tissue called pleura that allows them to move and expand and contract without having friction. First, we will look at the outer structures of the heart. So this is looking at an anterior view, and over here we have the posterior view. Veins are going to be bringing blood back to the heart, and this is the right side of the heart, and this is the left side of the heart. The blood is gonna flow back to the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava. Anything above the diaphragm is going to come back to the heart through the superior. Anything below the diaphragm will come back through the inferior vena cava. The heart has four chambers. It has a right atrium and a left atrium, and it has a right ventricle, which you can't really see on this diagram. We'll look at that more closely in a second. And we have a left ventricle. So there are two atria and two ventricles. Then we have our pulmonary vessels. So the pulmonary arteries are gonna send blood to the lungs and the pulmonary veins are going to bring blood back from the lungs to the heart. The aorta is the largest blood vessel and that is gonna branch off and send blood to the upper body. It goes down behind the heart and this descending aorta will have blood vessels branching off that will go to the tissues of our lower body. Now the upper part of the heart is actually called the base and the bottom sort of point of the cone shape, this is called the apex of the heart. The other thing that I want to point out here are these vessels that we see on the surface of the heart. These are the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries supply the heart muscle itself with blood. When people have a coronary bypass, let's suppose there's a blockage in this blood vessel, we can take another vein like the saphenous vein out of the leg and we can connect it on the other side of the artery past the blockage. Somebody that has a triple bypass surgery would have three blood vessels with blockages that need to be bypassed. So the blood that is flowing through the atria and the ventricles does not supply the heart muscle with blood. The coronary arteries supply the heart muscle. So when our blood is circulating throughout the body from the aorta, those branching blood vessels, the arteries, send blood to a body part, like say your arms, and then once it reaches the capillaries, nutrients, waste, gas exchange occurs, hormones are dropped off, so then the blood flows back through venules towards the veins, which will then go back to the heart. So the blood doesn't flow through the body in one long garden hose kind of scenario. It's more like parallel circuits. So you'll have a circuit that goes to, say, your upper limbs. You'll have a circuit that goes to the digestive system, a circuit that goes to the kidneys. Okay, so we have parallel blood flow throughout the body. This means that we can regulate blood pressure in different parts of our body, so areas that need more blood flow can get it. Now let's have a look at the wall of the heart, the heart muscle, and there's a few layers of tissue that I want to point out. If we look at the ventricles, so we have a right ventricle, so now we've basically cut the heart in half so we can see the inside of it, a frontal section, and we can see the inside of the chambers. So we have the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Now remember, the blood that is flowing from the right ventricle is going to the lungs, and the blood that is flowing from the left ventricle is going to the aorta and to the rest of the body. Now notice the thickness of the muscle wall in the left ventricle compared to the right ventricle. So the muscle wall is thicker because the left ventricle has to push the blood out to the body which has much higher resistance compared to pushing blood to the lungs.
if we look at the layers of our cardiac wall, so the myocardium is the muscle component. This is the contractile branching muscle cells that are inside here. And then we have a layer called the endocardium on the inside of the chambers. And this will follow through to the inside of the blood vessels as well. So the endocardium are endothelial cells. They're like epithelial cells, but they're inside. Okay, so endo means inside. Then we have the epicardium, which is the outer layer on the surface of the heart. And we also call that the visceral layer. Then there's a little tiny space in between called the pericardial cavity. And there is serous fluid inside of there. And then the outer layer is the pericardium that surrounds the whole heart. This is the parietal layer. So there's an outer and an inner layer that surround the heart and there's fluid inside. So then when the heart is contracting, this fluid will decrease friction. The other thing that I want to point out in this diagram is this valve here and this valve here. These are the atrioventricular valves. So we have a right atrioventricular valve, which is also called the tricuspid. And we have a left atrioventricular valve, which is also called the bicuspid. Now, when blood is flowing through the heart, it is moving from the atria into the ventricles. If these valves didn't close properly, then when the ventricles contract to push blood up, and into the pulmonary or the systemic circulation, if these valves didn't close properly, blood might backflow into the atria. So we need to prevent that. We have to stop these valves from folding backwards and letting blood flow in the wrong direction. So we do that with these little fibers. These fibers are called chordae tendinae. They're like little tiny tendons, and they are connected to papillary muscles. So the purpose of these is to prevent the valves from flipping inside out. So we've looked at the main structures of the outside of the heart and the inside of the heart, and now we're going to follow the blood flow from the body to the heart, to the lungs, back to the heart, and then back to the body. So this is the cardiac cycle. So we're gonna start on the right-hand side where deoxygenated blood is coming back to the heart and then it flows through all of the different structures of the heart. So a couple things that I wanna point out. First, when the heart muscle is contracting, it's called systole. When it is relaxing, it's diastole. In the next video, we're going to look at the electrical conduction system and the order of electrical events that cause the muscle to contract. Then when we have the heart valves, when they close, they make a sound. This is where our heart sounds come from. We have lub dub or lub dub. And those thump 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 sounds are the valves closing. So the first sound is the AV valves closing. And the second sound is the semilunar valves closing. I'll go through that when we get to the next diagram. The other thing that I want to point out is the volume of blood in the left ventricle that is pumped out with each contraction. In an adult, that is somewhere around 70 milliliters of blood volume, and we call that the stroke volume. So every time the heart contracts, it pumps out about 70 milliliters of blood. And if we're exercising, that could increase by up to 40%. Now, our total blood volume is around five liters. So when we are at rest, the amount of blood that we are pumping out with each heartbeat, if we looked at that for one minute, it would actually equal about five liters. So when we're at rest, our heart is pumping our full blood volume each minute. And that can increase by a huge amount when we're exercising. Let's look at the exact pathway of the cardiac cycle. Okay, let's start over here on the right-hand side of the heart. Blood is gonna flow from the upper body through the superior vena cava and from the lower body through the inferior vena cava. 
then the blood is going to flow into the right atrium. Let's number these as we go. So here we have number one and number one. Then we're going to go into the right atrium. So we'll call that number two. The fossa ovalis, by the way, is an indentation. When you're a fetus, your blood actually flows through. This closes off when you're born. So the blood is going to flow into the right atrium. Then it is going to flow through the right atrioventricular valve into the right ventricle, which is number four. Then the blood flows from the right ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valve, which is number five. The blood is going to flow through this valve into the pulmonary circulation. First, we have our left pulmonary artery. Arteries always bring blood away. So blood is going to flow through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. It's going to pick up oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. And then it's going to come back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. From the pulmonary veins, it is going to go into the left atrium. Then it is going to flow through the left atrioventricular valve, which is also called the bicuspid or the mitral valve. Once it passes through this valve, then it is in the left ventricle, the thickest part of the heart muscle, because it has to have the strongest contractile force. That is going to pump the blood through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta and then out to different arteries to the body. Here we have the chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles that is preventing these valves from flipping backwards. Okay, and these are required because the ventricles are pumping the blood up whereas gravity is preventing the blood from going backwards through these valves. So these ones don't have to have the chordae tendinae, the semilunar valves. And in between the two ventricles, we have the interventricular septum. It's just the muscle wall that is dividing the left and right ventricles. So that is the pathway of blood flow through the heart for one cardiac cycle. Let's just have a quick look at the valves. So if we cut the heart in a transverse section and look down at the top of the heart, we can just sort of have a quick little look at what the valves look like. And then I am going to show you a summary of the exact order of the structures in one cardiac cycle. So looking down at the heart, we have the right AV valve and we have the left AV valve, the aortic and the pulmonary semilunar valves. And here is the summary of the order of structures that the blood will flow through, coming from the body with deoxygenated blood, and then coming from the lungs with oxygenated blood.